Welcome to Toffee Blue View, your source for all things Everton. With me today, I have Tom of originally of Toffee Blue View fame, but now uh, he's got his own thing going on. He's got the Toffee Blues Extra Show, which he's 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 the the main guy. He's the, the, <laughs> The honcho, the head honcho. It's Tom, everybody. Welcome back, Tom. All right, so, Tom, transfer connections. Let's start with the one that seems like is the most concrete. It seems the most concrete. Uh, was it Moise Keane from, yeah. uh, from Juventus, from Juve? Yeah. Once I told my kids we had a player we were hopefully getting from Juve, they flipped because I don't know why. <laughs> My kids love Juventus, <laughs> but <laughs> so uh, let's talk a little about uh, a little bit about Moise Keane, and do you think it's it's likely? Um, well, at first, I remember doing a short video for the channel on on the move, and I didn't. I thought it was literally. I thought it was obviously his agent is Mino Raiola, mm. and I thought that's Raiola trying to negotiate a better contract for the player at Juve. But since then, has come some quite convincing news about a potential deal to lead me to believe and I lead a lot of others to believe that the movie is actually quite close mm-hmm. um, in the region of I think it's 35 million something like that for a young player 19 years old not made many appearances at all but he's done well in the ones he has played a couple of times for Italy as well at senior level and scored a couple of goals uh, which is good but um, it's a bit of gamble obviously he's not Premier League proven and if he was any good with an agent like Raiola how long would he last at Everton before Raiola was trying to negotiate another move for him that's a thing might it be another Lukaku obviously Lukaku is fantastic for the club broke records but he always had his eye somewhere else and that's why fans didn't endear to him too much and I, I kind of think it might be the same with uh, with this player but um, if we can get a few goals out of him into that pretty toothless team and he's, he's a really powerful dynamic attacker and I think that's really what we need with a little bit of a better finishing touch than Calvert-Lewin at the moment I think so he's something that we really I'd be, I'd be really happy with that one if he could pull that off yeah, he doesn't uh, – it's strange when you see him play because there are moments where his touch looks a little heavy, but then there are yeah. moments where it looks genuinely polished. That's one of the things when you watch Calvert-Lewin play, his touch looks silky. It looks – he looks yeah. very – like his passing is on point and everything, but Keane looks a little bit more like a natural finisher, um, yeah. a little bit more clinical when you, when you watch video of him and everything. Uh, but again, young. Yeah, he's very young. Very young yeah, he's kind of got he's got potential, but whether that means he'll stay for a while or or he'll end up moving on because of his agent, so or, or you never know. Like I don't want really to wish him away already when he's not even joined the club. So um, he's young, yeah, he's got potential to grow. He's he's not amazing at the moment, but he's a solid young player, and he could could, could become something amazing. So hopefully he'll do that at Everton. Is this better than you expected? I, f- I think if you pull that off, hopefully, yeah, I think that's um. With the, with the news on Keane and Zaha as well, if we, we'll, we'll come to him. But if you could pull those two off, I think Evertonians will be genuinely delighted with the window. So uh, I think so far it's been a slightly underwhelming window compared to what Brands was big enough. But if we could pull those off, it would really match and if not um, exceed expectations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'll say that's a stronger striker we'd be bringing in than I expected. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I that's a that's a hell of a move in my. I I just. I couldn't believe it when I heard we were linked with him. I was like, I was like, nah, that's gonna fade away. I get the connection, but it's gonna fade. Um, but damn, uh, another one that I think is a better player than I expected, and I'm a, still a little co- concerned about the price tag. Uh, if it happens, uh, Wilfred Zaha from Palace, who's a player. I, I, I mean, I've liked him as a player for a a really long time. He's another player that my kids are super psyched about. Uh, <laughs> when I told uh, I told my my seven year old, I was like, you know, we we might be. I think we just put a bid in for Zaha. He goes, Zaha, oh my god, <laughs> he's really good, Dad. And I'm like, yeah, I, he's he's a good player. <laughs> he creates a lot of chances. Um, but I mean, the new. I mean, we we supposedly had a bid denied. Uh, or, or rejected 52 million pounds. The new bid supposedly is 55 million with Jink Tosun and uh, James McCarthy included. If this is true, yeah, because so, I need to include that 
that may not, this may be just stupid transfer bullshit. It may not be accurate. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, because that's where we are right now. It's, it's the ridiculous mm-hmm. season, but Wilfred Zaha at that price, what would you think about that? Um, it's an interesting one because obviously I think the first offer was 52 million straight out. No, no player. And then the second one, it's got up to 55 million plus, um, Tosin, who I think the club will value at about twenty million, we bought him for about that, and I don't think they would want to take too much of a loss on him. So fifteen twenty mil plus McCarthy, who I think they value about eight to ten mil. So it's considerably more than the first offer, and potentially as much as, if not even a little bit more than what uh, Crystal Palace would reportedly hold mouth for, which was eighty million uh, from Arsenal when they first showed interest. Um, so it obviously drives it up quite a lot. But whether they are interested in player plus cash deals. Um, we'll see, but I've, 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 separately from the Zaha deal, I've, I've heard rumours about Tosin and McCarthy both going to mm-hmm. Palace. Um, so I do think they're two players who they would be interested in taking on yeah, as part of the deal. But yeah, I'd, I'd be buzzing if we if we did get Zaha at that price tag. Um, I'm not sure because there was there was a comparison and stats I saw on Twitter quite recently about um, between Wilfred Zaha and Kevin Morales. And there wasn't too much difference in the goal scored and assists in the games played, which is a little bit concerning. Yeah. But um, it depends really whether he signed as a striker or as a winger, um, because obviously we, we're looking at both. Um, so I'm not sure which which or both positions he'd be, he'd be signing into. But um, obviously he's versatile as well, so that's a that's a plus. He, he could play up front, so he could play on the wing as well. So um, I'm excited about that one. Obviously he's an exciting player, but uh, I just always think back to when he could have. Uh, I think it was when we signed Yannick Balassi a few years ago. Everyone said they got the wrong player. We should have got Zaha and we got Balassi because yeah. um, they were at similar levels at the time. And they've just completely gone polar opposite since yeah. then. So I think we should have got Zaha in the first place. But I would be really happy if we got him now. Hey, everybody. Uh, Jerry and Turner here. Um, for those of you listening, I'm not sure if you can tell Turner's here. Turner, can you say hey? Hey. There you go. So you know there's a child with me. Uh, it's an update uh, as far as Zaha goes. The club has come out and said... We have not made a second bid, including Jink Tosin and McCarthy. Um, it's very strange. It's not often that the club comes out and says, hey, that newspaper is wrong. Uh, that publication is wrong. They, they just don't do that often. It was kind of kind of different. But uh, just letting you know, yeah, that's, uh, that's the update. Turner, what do you think about that? Did you want Zaha on our team? No. Oh, you didn't want Zaha? Why is that? I heard you. Uh, you do? Well, too bad, because I guess it's probably not going to happen. They said they don't plan to... Uh, they, they mentioned something about it being the end of the discussion. So uh, it looks like Zaha may not be coming to us, buddy. Are you okay? Yes. Are you going to cry about it later? No. Okay. Well, there you go. There's your update, everybody. Thanks. Yeah, this is... I was concerned because this whole time I was expecting us to go for a left-footed forward. Yeah. And then I heard that the connection with Zaha and I thought this is not right. We're looking for a left footed forward, you know, a left footed yeah. wing forward. You know, that's, that's what we're looking for. So, uh, immediately I, this whole time I've been thinking Malcolm's who we're going to get, you know, um, yeah. and not really taking the Zaha links very seriously. Um, I was thinking Malcolm Neris, you know, one of those type of players. Uh, but right now it seems like, it's pretty concrete, not, uh, not uh, okay, pretty concrete. I, I'm just misspeaking here. <sighs> There's not a lot of Malcolm buzz happening right now, okay? Um, yeah. The word is Zenit is talking to him right now. Uh, again, okay. th- we could be using the Zaha stuff to bring the price down on Malcolm, and Barca could be using Zenit as a, <laughs> you know what I mean? That could be, <laughs> that could be the, the reality there. Um, I'd be concerned we don't have any left-footed wingers, though. Yeah, you know what I mean. Especially, I don't want to play with, I don't want to play with uh, Theo Walcott anymore on the on on the uh, on the right wing, and obviously we could, we've just sold Adam Luckman as well, who was an option on that mm-hmm. wing as well. So we are short, and we do need to sign someone. And I'd be, I'd be probably a little bit happier if we did sign Neres mm-hmm. um, than Zaha because I do think he's a little bit better player. Obviously, he's not prem prem proven like Zaha is, um, but um, yeah, I think Neres fits the profile. I just say. Um, a little bit better, but um, Zaha would be a good signing at both striker and on the wing. So um, the fuzzy users, um, I'm not sure whether that's 
a massive stumbling point because I do think he would be a good sign either way. But um, to be honest, I'd take either of them at this point of the window. There's not too long left. I'd be happy with either uh, Neres or Zaha. But there's, there's a hard deal looking as close as it does. Uh, if you can pull that off, I would be made. Yeah, uh, I did see someone, and again, I really apologize if you're this someone on Twitter, saying that they have noticed or seen where Bernard is getting more more time at like center attacking mid during training right now. So if that's the case, it could be yeah. they're thinking about keeping Richarlison on the right and moving Zaha to the left and doing it like that. Yeah. Uh, which mm-hmm. I know a lot of people do consider Bernard a that that to be, but he just hasn't played that position in a long time. You know he's shaped mm-hmm. like those kind of like those little diminutive playmakers. You know, a la David Silva. Yeah. You know those type of players. Yeah. Um, so and and we do need more creativity through the middle. But frankly, we need more creativity yeah. everywhere. <laughs> for an yeah. entire attack. So I don't know if that's just, the, again, that could just be, you know, spit in the wind. I don't know. But we'll see. Um, we mentioned yeah. uh, we mentioned Baucom, which who knows? He would be cheaper than Zaha. No idea. He'd be left-footed. No idea. Uh, and Neris, same thing. Cheaper, but probably more expensive than Malcolm. Um, yeah. uh, and I think Neris is almost a little bit bigger of a risk coming from the Dutch league than Malcolm. However, Neres yeah. was doing really well in the Dutch league and Malcolm was not doing great for Barca. So, yeah. uh the the least risk here is Zaha, frankly. And that's what you're paying for, you're yeah, paying definitely. for a player in this prime. You know. Exactly. Premier yeah. League prime. Um so, let's move on from that that forward position to uh the one recently vacated by Idrissa Gay, who has, has ripped all of our hearts out, but we knew it was coming. That that that, <laughs> that beautiful, beautiful man has walked away. He's he, just a professional, though. You know, he wanted to leave in January. We said, eh, and he kept playing hard, and he played fantastically, and he played <laughs> better, actually, when we denied that yeah. move. Mm-hmm. So um, who are we going to bring in for him? The big the big money, I think, has been on that Gbamin from Mainz. I think a lot of people have said that he's going to be the one we bring in. He's a big guy, uh, definitely is a ball winner. I, the video I've seen of him, though, it, it doesn't completely impress me as a, as a great passer. You know what I mean? But he does a yeah. good job of pressing mm-hmm. the ball forward um, with speed. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about that player Similar versus to- somebody like Mario Lamina or someone like that? Hey, um. I've not seen a massive amount of Gabamian, but I've watched some some clips of him, and he's definitely he's he's bigger in stature than mm-hmm. than Gay was. So I'd say, um, if not the same in in the the box to box style, he's a different physique. Really, he's kind of a different kind of thing in terms of he's a much taller player. Um, so I'm not sure. It's hard to replace a decent Gay and that kind of player who's just a little terrier. You can just chop up the midfield as well as he did and just finish top of the tackling ranks every season um, or well I think he was picked on the final day by, by Wilfred yeah. Didi but um, <laughs> yeah I think um, it's, it's hard to find a player like that as good as that and we will struggle and that's why we've got multiple in mind we can't we, we haven't really focused on one we've got about three or four he could replace Idrissa Gay in that position it will be difficult but uh, with Gamalmin I think that would be a similar amount of money to what we've sold Gay for so um, I suppose I don't think it's a like for like replacement, but um, it would be an interesting swap to see. Um, I'm not sure if he's quite as good as breaking of the, uh, breaking of the play, but um, he might provide a little bit more stability and I think um, a little bit more dynamic um, than what we've got at the moment, like some Morgan Schneiderlin, some people like that. So I think he would be um, he'd be better than those. I'm not sure if he'd be as good as a DCK straight away. It's, it's not a, it's not going to be a case of signing a player who's going to slot straight into Gay's role and just do the exactly same thing and settle in straight away it's going to take time for someone to settle in and play that role and i think we will see some transition um and maybe delph might have to play in that position for a while but um yeah i'm, I'm i'd be happy with gabami and what i've seen of him is is quite strong um whereas some of the others uh, mario lamina he's attracted quite a bit of interest from different clubs um 
not just obviously he's, he's done well in the Sam Southampton. I think he's done a little bit better on the Hazen Hutel. Obviously a great, a great manager in my opinion um, with the pressing game. So playing that pressing game, coming from that pressing game in this in the Premier League, I think he would be less of a gamble like we talked about with Zaha before, being less of a gamble being Premier League proven. Uh, obviously been playing that pressing game on the Hazen Hutel as well. So maybe he could fit into um, into Gay's role, Gay's role a little bit better. So I'd be um, slightly more inclined to go for Lamina personally as he's um, he's. He's kind of he might understand the Premier League a little bit more and be able to fit into that role, having played in that pressing role. But it'll be interesting yeah. to see who we get. Uh, I I will say when I saw Gbamin, I he did, uh, he did strike me as more of a Silva type of center mid, you know, center defensive mid. That player, yeah. he he usually likes two big physical guys to to be in front of the the defense. Uh, so yeah. uh, it does seem to fit into work but um again i don't know uh what what the plan actually is it could be these new names have been brought up to uh to uh, help to kind of help get the gabamine over the line or it could be lamina's agent uh putting his name out there that could be a possibility um and additionally another name who was mentioned is a slovakian player named uh, lobatka who plays for celta vigo so uh again i've you know, if you look at Twitter, though, everybody's like, I don't think Labatka is actually a real link. So, yeah, I'm not sure about that one. He's a bit slow yeah. as well, I think. He's, he's quite small. See, that's, he's when, I, when I saw him, I, he didn't slow. strike me as a normal, uh, a like for like or anything, not even a like for like, because mm. in the player we bring in, I don't think we're looking for like for like. You know what I mean? Because no. I wasn't mm. sure when when Silva first came whether or not Idrissa Gay was the fit for what Silva wanted to do. He just is a really good yeah. player and mm-hmm. amazing at what he does, and he made things work with him. So I don't know. I'll be curious yeah. when he's when he's starting to get pieces that fit more with what he wants to do. Um, one other p- position to discuss to discuss. Uh, Kurt Zuma. Not sure if Kurt Zuma's happening, and I think a lot of us are are um, crying into our pints over that one. I am because he, <laughs> he was one of our steadiest defenders last year, um, our steadiest center back anyway. Uh, it's starting to look like Zuma's not happening. And then uh, Tomori's name was mentioned as a possibility on loan uh, instead of Zuma. Uh, it seems like what we'd be doing there is having Mina be our starter, our regular starter, and have Tomori come in as supplemental, which is I, I think what we wanted to do last season, but Mina was injured. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, and then uh, there's another name that was mentioned yesterday on Twitter of uh, John Stones as us having asked about him. <laughs> uh, I don't know which of those is actually real, man. Do you know? Uh, do you have any any thoughts on this at all? Which what do you actually think is going to happen for our center back situation? Um. Ooh, well, we obviously need one. Um. Obviously, Zoom is gone. Uh, Jaggy Elka has been let go as well, so we, we obviously need backup and Holgate. Um, he, he could stay and play at centre back, but he wasn't very impressive when he gave away the penalty the other day. That was pretty amateur um, at best, so I, I was disappointed with that. But I think Tamori did quite well. Um, I think he was on loan at was it at Derby last year under Frank Lampard mm-hmm. and did quite well. Um, I think that's, that's the I same think player that's correct. I'm yeah. thinking of. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if he played a centre back or right back because he can't he can't play at both. But um, obviously he'd be signed. Obviously Zuma had done that in the past as well. But I do think it'd be a kind of Zuma minus three years if he signed Tamori. And what we want is a, a player kind of in his prime, ready like Zuma was. And um, if you can't get him back, which would be devastating, um, Tamori's a different kind of sign. He's kind of one for the future, one who would develop into the squad, whereas Zuma was squad ready. And I do think yes. we need the squad ready centre back. Um, so I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be as as bright a prospect as Tamori is. I would be tempted to go for someone a little <laughs> bit more. <laughs> for, for those of you listening, I just dropped my pen in, in the middle of Tom speaking, <laughs> and it scared the hell out of me. And I, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and you can leave that in if you want, uh, just because I'm an idiot. Anyway, Tom, I. <laughs> Apologize for interrupting you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, so if uh, if Tamori's probably not, do you think this is going to be one of those that just comes out of nowhere and we hear uh, Everton have acquired so and so on loan just out of nowhere, and that's the way it's going to work, the way Zuma happened last year? 
It could be, yeah. It could be. Like, Zima was kind of a shock on the final day. And I think it probably will go to the final day because there's no one solid being mentioned of interest just yet. And to sign, I st- I've dropped my bloody head for as well. <laughs> you going are on. just a disaster um, right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. I hope you don't drop anything else. But um, <laughs> your thing stopped falling off the wall, doesn't it? No, we um, <laughs> But yeah, um, uh, I think to, if we were to sign someone squad ready, it would cost a fair bit of money and a fair bit of negotiating as well. I don't think anyone with a squad ready squad ready centre back would be willing to sell. Um, so it would be a difficult one. Um, but I think it might go to the final date. And if we do, if we do get someone, the great. But if we don't, we've got a, we've got three, haven't we? We've got Kimina and Holgate, and I think we do need another one. But you never know. We've got to, like. Lewis Gibson there, uh, Morgan Feeney. We've got a couple in the in the reserves in, in the sorry in the under twenty threes team who could come up. But um if we don't sign one, it's not the end of the world, but we do kinda we we, we could deal with one. Um so it'll be interesting to see whether whether we go in for one on the final ask days you if you of the window. Feeney or Gibson had a shot. Uh, cause, and and what's really gonna be interesting is if is if Holgate definitely is staying. See, I was under the impression he was definitely gonna be staying and that's just the way it is, but then performance was not fantastic the other day without what I was reading and and Silva confirmed it by saying it was a really silly penalty to give away uh so yeah. and he's and he does that every once in a while he has done that before um I know when yeah. uh, was it last last fall uh, early in the season he just made a lot of silly mistakes giving away you know not tracking defenders yeah. who were who were making runs behind him uh, just a lot of just amateur stuff that just brain farting, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah. anyway, mm-hmm. uh, I'll be really curious as to what we do about center back. Cause I know a lot of people, that's what they feel like should be our first purchase. That should be our first order of business right now. Yeah. Um, and I know Gibson has, has played well and a lot of people are high on Feeney. Uh, I, I'm just, I can't imagine us going in with, Two of those three out of Holgate, Gibson, and Feeney. I could see Feeney and Gibson going out on loan because I feel like it's maybe they need a loan, you know? Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. so one thing we really oh, and one other thing about center back, Gabamin technically played center back a lot in the past. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. He, I think it's he's impressive. only recently become like a, a center defensive mid. So, yeah, that's the thing. So there may be some versatility with him as well. One thing we haven't discussed at all is right back. We've mentioned that <laughs> Tamori yeah. technically could deputize there if need be, but we haven't really. De- there was a player that people had mentioned, uh, the right back from Atletico Madrid. What is his name? Is it Arias? Yeah. Yeah. Heard yeah. Him mention, Arias, no yeah. idea if that's actually happening. There is, it's been totally silent because of all the noise on these attacking players. <laughs> so uh, it's starting to look like there are defensive reinforcements that come in are going to be the ones that kind of fly in under the radar. Yeah, hopefully, un- unless unless there's no one else. Danny oh. Alves is still going. <laughs> Danny, I, I don't, he hasn't got a club. Just please snap him up. I know he's dead. He's still he's still at it. He's still at his best. Why Barcelona ever let him go is beyond me because he's still, what is he, 34 and he's still at his best in my opinion. He's still flying. So I he doesn't fit what Brands is trying to do whatsoever. But if we don't sign anyone else, please sign uh, Daniel. That'd, that'd be a heck of a move. <laughs> uh, I, and I know just the idea yeah. of being able to sign him just kind of makes everybody like grin and be like, hey, you know, <laughs> Danny, Danny Alves is on our team. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, it would be, we'd all have that goofy <laughs> giggle, I think, but it wouldn't really be solving our right back issue <laughs> for the future. When yeah. I think mm-hmm. I, a lot of people, that's a position to be concerned about because right now, Coleman, you never know which Coleman you're going to get. There was a stretch where he was not impressive yeah. last season, and then there was a stretch where he was. So maybe he's just getting older and he's going to have some consistency issues, and that's just the way it is. He's going to be a great player, and maybe he sometimes he'll struggle. Maybe we just need somebody we can believe in, and I, I think that's going to be a purchase. You know? Yeah, definitely. That's it's going to be an yes. investment, someone for the long term, because obviously we've got Kenny out, loading, out on loan in Schalke, but I'm not sure if he will be the, the long term right back for Everton. We need someone perhaps a little bit more quality and obviously that's a, that's going to be a difficult one as well because there's not been too many names mentioned obviously I'd be happy with Arias but there haven't been too many names mentioned and that's kind of like before the window obviously strikers are priority but after that 
right back for me is definitely because Coleman, as you say, he's a little bit consistent sometimes, and we really, we really need someone to push Coleman because it's, it's not good enough just him kind of banking on that spot and being inconsistent, um, speaking week out. Any other names you want to mention? I know there was the young Brazilian that we couldn't bring in if we want, even if we purchased him, we wouldn't be able to bring him in until January anyway because he's not old enough. Um, trying to remember his name. Mm. Rainer, Rainer, yeah, Rainer yeah. Jesus. Somebody, somebody, somebody Jesus. I, yeah, I saw was, that and I'm like, well, I'm fine with Jesus on our team. Uh, it's <laughs> get our own yeah, Jesus. Because yeah. uh, he's supposed to be a brilliant yeah, young player, yeah, but we'd be and, dropping like 40 million on him yeah. if we. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd be happy with that one though, because obviously 40 mil for a 17 year old is absolutely yeah. just ridiculous. But the likes of Barcelona and Man City. That's the type of purchases them, they so, make. So, you never and know. That's the type of purchase we don't make. Yeah. And the idea of getting into that league is yeah. that's exciting. That is cool. So yeah, any yeah, other exactly. any other names you mm, want to mention? Interesting. Oh, who is that? What happened to Sebastian Sosa? Where's he gone? There was the work permit issues, but obviously to, um, that, that was I thought, quite it, I thought it was the window. That was that, I thought that was gonna be our Yeah. I thought, I thought it was nearly done, but I think obviously the work permit issue is a complicated thing, and that's just gone, um, it's gone to the tip basically for now. But uh, apart from that, um, I don't think so. I think uh, obviously there's quite a good, there's a good few free agents still out there. I'm not sure if anyone fits the bill, but I had a, I had a little list of them. Um, there were some really interesting ones, and obviously we, they wouldn't be a first option. They'd be kind of a backup um, if. I couldn't get anyone else, then we would dip into the tra- fee transfer market. But the likes of Danny Elvis, Ribery, Sturridge, not Sturridge, Balotelli, Danny Welbeck. But you know, no, you know that everybody's going to be um, worried we're going to bring Welbeck in. Out of, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, like, like literally, like, hopefully, if there's no one else, but yeah. Um, Juan Fran, right back. Um, Marcus Renze, there's um, Gary Cahill with Raboni. Manny Fernandez could come back. Yeah, uh-huh. Lewis Holpe. There's a few good um, free agents out there. That could be interesting. So you never know if if he comes down anyone. Yeah, I'll be curious. I, I feel market. like we we always get those big long lists, but we rarely actually bring in any of those. You know, I remember yeah. there's there was one year we wanted a number yeah. ten so bad, and we didn't. And then there was we were linked to mm-hmm. one a French free agent you know, like it was after the window had shut and we had not gotten Yarmolenko and yeah. they were connecting us to this French player and I cannot yeah. remember who it was but I just remember getting like getting all pumped thinking we gotta get him we gotta sign him and then Martinez was like yeah, we're going <laughs> with who we got and I was just like, kidding me if that's the, if that's the moment I was thinking about yeah it was awful uh, so anyway all right yeah. well I'm really curious if the free if the free agents happen that would be Mm. Well, I don't know who that French guy was as well. Who did he sign for Grenier? in the end? Do you remember? Is it Clement Clement Grenier? Is a, ah, right. a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a yeah, number yeah. a number ten, just a, a really smart pass passing player. Yeah, yeah. Um, just can't, yeah. So if that's who I'm thinking yeah, yeah, of, yeah. I don't know. He was a he was definitely a like mm-hmm. a, a veteran. Like he had played for a long time. You know what I mean? So anyway, all right. Yeah. So that's it for our transfer connections. This has been a long video. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> if you are digging the videos, please subscribe to the Toffee Blues YouTube channel. We'd really appreciate it. If you're if you're not feeling looking at our faces, why don't you listen to the podcast? You know, sometimes the podcast has extra stuff <laughs> on there. Like this time, this podcast is going to have a lightning round with Tom, where you can learn all about his deepest darkest secrets. Really? We'll be reading his diary aloud. <laughs> Because that's what I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tom, Tom, Tom's like, it's a journal. It's not a diary. So, <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, um, so Tom, do you have anything you want to plug? Besides the extra show, Toffee Blues yeah. Extra Show, Tom's the, the voice of the that. Show. Anything yeah. else? Yeah, what have you got going at the moment? Um, follow Marine on Twitter. Follow Marine AFC on Twitter. Get, 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 second club. Get, get behind them. Um, yeah. We've been relegated last season. I worked there as a media officer, and you've got to get behind them because they're a massive club in Crosby with a great history. And you should get the, anyone in Liverpool should get behind them as a second club and come along. It's a great day out, grassroots football, and you should really get behind I, them. I don't even know yeah. how you argue <laughs> with Tom on that. Besides the fact that Tom is nice, it just sounds kind of awesome. We were talking off camera about how how 
amazing it would be like when, <laughs> when when i when i finally get to visit england badly me and the wife want to go see some non-league football so i have a feeling that marine's going to be our first non-league football experience so it'd be fantastic yeah. all right so uh i guess that's it for yeah. now we're going to move on and talk about the new stadium plans tom went to one of the consultations so we're going to discuss all right tom see you in a bit all right bye see you later. awful throw bye <laughs> that's better yeah